You've been hearing all the fuss about DuckDB and want to get up to speed? We'll cover everything from installation, working flow, understanding DuckDB ecosystem, and doing our first analysis. So grab your favorite duck, a hot beverage, and let's get into it. If you're not familiar with DuckDB in the first place, it's an in-process SQL OLAP database. Roughly speaking, it has all the benefits of a database with none of the hassles of managing one. But then understanding software concept without practice is like trying to swim without jumping into the water. So let's dive into the code and the balance. Installing DuckDB is pretty straightforward. You only need the binary depending on your operating system and start the process. On macOS, you can also use Homebrew Package Manager, which is going to make DuckDB CLI directly available to your path and upgrades is going to be easier to manage. DuckDB can now be launched by just calling DuckDB. You can follow along by checking the GitHub repository. The link will be in the description. But before we start running a bunch of commands, a nice and light setup would be to work with an editor, a SQL file and a terminal and to just send the comments from the editor to the terminal. That way you have visibility on all the comments you're running. You can safely version them and get them. Plus you can enjoy all the features of your editor or IDE, like formatting, linting. And yes, you can even have Copilot if you are missing an AI friend. Gosh, they are everywhere these days. I'm using VS Code and I just configured a simple shortcut to send the command from the editor to the terminal. You can do so by opening the keyboard shortcut JSON file, add any key binding that you would like to with this command. Of course, you can probably achieve the same workflow using any other ID or editor. Yes, I'm looking at you, Vim and TMX nerds. Now that we have our gears ready, let's play around with the CLI. As DuckDB is an in-memory process, by default, it will not persist any data. So if I create a simple table based on the select statement as it is, and by the way, this Mandarin DAX literally looks like Pokemon. I can see now my table using the show table command and I can query it. And by the way, this is a neat feature from DuckDB. It supports from first syntax, which enables you to forget about the painful select star if you just want to query all the columns. So now if I exit the process and launch DuckDB again, my DAX table is gone. So there is two ways of persisting the data. First, simply put a path where you want the database to persist when you launch the DuckDB process. Any extension to the file name will do, but commonly you can use .db, .duckdb, or .ddb, or .mandarins. If there is no DB, it will create it. There's one existing when you launch the process, it will attach it so that you can read from it. And you can also pass some parameter to have a read-only mode if it's a critical DB that you don't want to mess with. The second way of persisting data... Hold on, hold on, what is it this file format all about? Well, actually, I'm glad you asked. This is a custom DuckDB file format. It's a single file database, meaning all tables are included. Supporting update in transactional, ACID compliant fashion. It stores the data in compressed columnar format that plays very well for large-scale aggregation. This contrasts, for example, to a transactional database, which is optimized for high frequency writes and typically stores the data as rows or doubles to support that. Anyway, it's a great custom file format. And if you want to read more about this file format, I'll put a few blogs in the description. Does that make any sense? I guess you can go now, right? So second way to persist the data, if your DuckDB process is already launched, is to use the open command. Now that we have our database persisted, let's run a few common comments. Let's play with reading and writing CSV and parquet file locally. I have a small data set I took from Kaggle, which contain the daily Netflix top 10 TV shows and movies. Data covers only the United States from the period 2020 to March 2022. So we are going to be able to answer the most existential question, which is, what were the US binge watching during the COVID lockdown? Let's load first our CSV using the read CSV auto command. This would infer the schema automatically, but of course you can pass the schema and also the delimiter by using the read CSV command with a few parameters. 
When we use this command, we just read the data set. We don't actually create a table. To do so, we'll need the create table statement. And you can nest this one with a select statement that we just used. Or the from command, as we just want to have all columns anyway. To write to CSV, you can use the copy command with a few parameters. For CSV, you're going to pass the delimiter and the path where you want to output the file. For Parquet, you just specify the file path. And to read data from Parquet, you guess it, you can use the read Parquet command. Let's discuss about displaying the data and how we can tweak that. The dot mode command can be used to change the appearance on how the tables return to the terminal output. In addition to customize the appearance, these modes have additional benefits. There are multiple ways you can display the data. One convenient, for example, is to use the mode lines if you're reading JSON file and you want to display and inspect this long nested JSON, a whole half a long nested JSON thread. <coughs> you can pipe the DuckDB output from the terminal to a file, for example. One interesting way to output the result is through a markdown file. So I can use, for example, dot mode markdown and combine this display mode with dot output or dot once. Dot output will write all the outputs to the file I'm giving and dot once, you guessed it, will just do it once and revert back to the normal behavior. So let's say we wanted to output the result to our markdown, we do dot mode markdown, then dot output my file dot md for example, and here it goes nothing because I haven't run any query yet. So let's run the query. And as you can see, I have some results in my markdown file. Last but not least, I want to show you that you can run a command and then exit directly the DuckDB process by using the C flag when you run DuckDB. And that's pretty neat because then you can basically do a select to any CSV or Parquet file directly. It's lightweight and easy to use, and you could even wrap up common function, like for example, if you want to have one that converts CSV to Parquet, you can also do that. Finally, DuckDB has a set of flag of configuration that you can use to fine tune. Understanding extensions. DuckDB has a number of extensions available and ready to use. However, not all of them are packaged by default, but DuckDB has a mechanism that allows remote extension installation. Let's see what kind of core extensions are available in DuckDB by using one of the metadata table function, which is DuckDB extensions. So here we can see which one are actually installed by default and which one I can just directly install because they are listed in the core. Let's install a popular one, HTTPFS, which enables us to read and write from remote files over HTTPS. It also works with AWS S3 and Google Cloud Storage. To install an extension which is available in the core list, just do install and the name of the extension. When this command is run, DuckDB is actually gonna download and put it into your own directory under .duckdb folder slash extensions. You can change the default destination folder by using the configuration flag, which is the extension directory. So now that uh, our extension is download, we need to load it. And that's where we use the load command. Note that if you are using a third party extension library, which is not listed there, or you are building your own extension, you're going to need to pass the flag unsign when you launch the DuckDB process. Extensions are awesome and you can also build your own and the DuckDB Labs team has put a template to help you get started. Link in the description. I mean, if by that time you haven't checked the description, I don't know why you're here. So now that you have gone through the basics of DuckDB, let's cover a simple use case end to end. So I have a remote file sitting on AWS S3, still the same Netflix data, and I want to do some analytics. Remember the existential question in SQL and store the result locally. As we saw, I'm going to need to install the extension HTTPFS and load it. For a public S3 bucket, I only need to specify the region, but most of the case, your bucket will be private and you will need to pass AWS credential. That means the key ID and the secret access key. While we do use the HTTPS protocol, you need to pass the S3 URI, which means that it has to start with S3. Now that I have my data loaded, let's have a look using the awesome from command. We can also create the schema using the show method. Okay, so we have the number of days of a show staying in the top 10. So 
Let's find which shows stay the longest. Of course, that's a daily snapshot, so I will need a group by on the name and a max on the number of days. All right. StuckDB is really fast, there is really not a long suspense, but here is the result. Coco Melon, wow, a kid's show ranking number one. I guess the parents had some hard time during COVID. Plus kids can just watch the same thing over and over without getting bored. Let's now look at the movies. And wow, with no surprise again, ranking number one, a kid movie. All right, now that I have my data, I can export it to CSV, let's say, using the copy command. I can either create a table first or just nest the copy command with the select statement I just used. And voila. All right, hope you enjoyed this video. We got to cover the CLI, the extensions, and do our first analytics. And plus, you don't know what to watch next on Netflix for your kids, if you have any kids. And if if you don't, just stick ranking number two or three and I guess you're fine. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe. There are gonna be a lot more DuckTV video related and probably more ducks too. And if you're curious about how DuckTV was created, check out this video where we interview Hannes, the co-creator of DuckTV and made a quack PVP.